years ago, I wanted to have Bruce on the show. It just never happened. Um, Bruce was not willing to do a sit down. So this is his first, very, very first exclusive. My very, very first exclusive. So I'm super excited that you agree. And I am a little nervous. I gotta be honest with the people. But they love honesty. I'm here and I'm gonna give you all a little bit of who I am. So you can hear from my mouth and not from other people's mouth. Okay. You know? Perfect. So let's talk about the beginning of Bruce's ballroom career. Like, who introduced you to ballroom? Um, what was your first introduction to the scene? Well, my first introduction to the scene was, oh my goodness. I would have to say it was the DC ball that I can recall. And I was there with Zerk, who's my gay father. Okay. Um, I can't really remember, honestly, the first time I walked the ball. Mm -hmm. I can't, I don't know why, but I cannot remember, honestly, the first time I walked, because it was so long ago. Was it in DC, do you remember? It, had, it was in DC, of course. Okay. It was in DC. Um, but I did end up moving along New York City, Atlanta, and other states, walking balls. Was your first, not your first time walking, but your first category, was it always, let's, let's double back. Okay. For the people that don't know you, mm -hmm. please let them know your ballroom status okay. and the category that you walk. I am legendary Bruce Garçon. Um, well, I say I'm legendary Bruce Khan Christian. Got some. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Um, I wore Pretty Boy Realness, which um, I've walked and won over the top contenders, um, which is what you're supposed to do when you walk a category. You're supposed to like, dominate all the top people. You feel but like I you should do that before you be deemed legendary mm -hmm. i do feel like let's that. save that we're gonna get into, into i do feel like that, that. that okay but that's for people that don't know my history but the right people know my history okay in ballroom um before pretty boy realness i was walking real with a twist okay and there are videos out there um <laughs> i know of me walking realness with a twist um why you start walking realness with a twist I start walking realness with a twist because I felt like I can do better in a different category. Mm -hmm. um, so I started walking pretty boy realness. Okay. I cannot remember who told me I should walk pretty boy realness. I can't really remember, but I do remember when I did walk and win. I'm not sure if Jason Prodigy. What's up, Jason? I love Jason. Jason. I, I love Jason. Jason. Um, Jason Prodigy um, said to me, "Oh, you finally found the category that works for you." That's not what. That wasn't his exact words, but I do remember him saying something of that nature to mm -hmm. me. Um, so um, I did good walking rhythms with the Swiss, but I did better walking pretty well with this. Okay. So you said Zerk basically went to your first, took you to your first ball. Yeah, Zerk is my gay father. Um, that's Zerk Khan, Khan, for those that don't know. Zerk Khan. Legendary um, Zerk Khan. Realness. Realness. Um, how did you meet Zerk? Um, actually, me and Zerk grew up around the same neighborhood, which mm -hmm. is Mayfair and Paradise. Okay. And what's crazy is Zerk is not the first person that took me out to my gay, to a, to a gay club. And who is? Um, actually, it was this guy named Chad. And I have not seen Chad in years. I really would like to know like how he's doing. Like mm -hmm. I haven't seen Chad in years. Okay. Um, let me tell you how that happened. So me and my best friend Ronald, shout out Ronald, I love you. That's like birth be best friend. Mm -hmm. So um, my best friend Ronald, um, we were hanging out and we went down to Union Station. Lord. Right, exactly. This was in the late 90s. And I'm not that old, y'all. So just to set the right, <laughs> just to set the yeah, people be trying to make me, you know, forty and no years before forty come. Remember that. Um, but I was just around, like I was going. Mind you, okay, backtrack back. Um, so Ronald knew Chaz, mm -hmm. which I met him once. All of us met up at Union Station, 
And Chaz was like, oh, hey, you know, who are you? I'm like, I'm Bruce and Ronald, you know, we, they introduced us or whatever. And he was like, I have some passes. They had the Edge on Fridays. They used to have a, a they used to have little passes mm -hmm. that you get, you get in free before 11 o'clock yeah. or something like that. And back in the days, if you get to the club early, they never asked for IDs. Mm -hmm. They never asked for IDs back in the days. So we ended up going to the Edge on a Friday. Um, that was when they had like the different rooms, the vote room, and I guess we ran into Zerk there. So y'all have to tell us what year that was, but how old were you, do you remember? Oh, I know that I was- You were still in high school? I was still in high school, and I used to, then my mom was married, so we lived in Highsville. Okay. And we had a house out in Highsville. So I used to, on the weekends, I used to go over to my grandmother's house. Who lived around Paradise? Who lives around Mayfair and Paradise, okay. where I grew up at. And that was my way of yeah, okay. hanging out and just being out all night. Okay. Um, so we ended up going to the edge. Um, I'll never forget, I went to the back room of the edge and people was voguing and they were like circling around people. I mean, you know, circling around and they was doing runway and stuff. And I was like, I never seen this. Like, you know, I'm a teenage boy in high school, you know, just really coming out. Mind you, I had, mind you, I had a girlfriend. Yes, I had a girlfriend. <laughs> I had a girlfriend. So I always knew that I was gay, but I guess I didn't know how to accept it or acknowledge it, I guess. I don't know, mm -hmm. because even still then, I. Even though I was gay, I wasn't thinking about talking to other men. So I was you, just, but you were still attracted to her? Yeah, I was still attracted See, to her. See, a lot of people that, don't understand that. They, they, but they, it makes sense. sense. Yeah, but so. Do you, ha can you explain that? Um, I can try to explain it. Did you just know, like, you had an attraction for girls, but you also knew that there was an attraction? For, 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 not necessarily attraction for men at that time. I just knew that I was, kind of like a little flamboyant so but you can I, you but you, some people can't associate the two because right. just because you know you're flamboyant that doesn't necessarily mean you want to act on being with act on right 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 guys so let me just say this i'm thinking probably had i not went to my grandma's house that weekend and met up with ronald and we went out to the gay clubs i'm gonna get to all that because we went we went completely left ronald went this way I went that way. Ronald never came back, and that's this is a this is an example of when you and Dante was interviewing because I watched that and you said how you have gay people that don't associate themselves with like the gay scene and the gay clubs and balls and stuff like that. Yeah, that's how my best friend Ronald is. Okay. Um, so um, I was I didn't know if I was gay, but I knew that I liked what I saw, and eventually I did I did end up accepting that I was gay. Mm -hmm. And then come to find out Kima ended up being a lesbian, who was my girlfriend. girlfriend. Okay. Yeah. So, but um, anyway, to make, anyway, to make a long story short, um, we went out to the edge. Mm -hmm. I loved it. I loved it. Like, I loved it to a point where I exchanged numbers with Chad. And I met Robert too. Um, shout out to Robert. I love Robert. Um, he just recently hit me up on Facebook. Um, so I ended up exchanging numbers, with, exchanging numbers with both of them. Um, I had a good night, I had fun. I ended up calling Chad and Robert the next day. They was like, oh, we going to Tracks on Sundays. I was there. Had you been to Tracks or knew what it was? Yeah. Didn't know nothing Didn't about me. it. Didn't know nothing about it. Okay. I was there. Like, we got there before 11 o'clock because I was underage. Mm -hmm. But they ended up getting me in, like. I was on the age, so went to tracks, had a nice time, and ever since every since then, I just was connected with them, going out, you know, and introduced to the club scene, mm -hmm. and then eventually being introduced to the ball scene. Okay. All right. So your introduction to the club scene. That segue to the ball. ball now they were ball. having balls at those clubs. Yeah, they were. So, do you remember any of the balls that you walked like around that time? Was it like um, 
what is it, Monday Night Madness. Yes, Monday Night Madness. And I'll never forget a long time ago, it was a ball um, at the edge, RJ ball. RJ okay. had a ball. Yes. I remember walking that ball. Was it like Independence Day Ma theme? Yes, it was like an Independence Day. Mm -hmm. Mind you, I never got voted in the House of Khan. I never got voted. Me neither. You, you, James and Steve just kind of. Yeah, like I never got voted in the House of Khan. What was your I process? Just, you was just I was Zerk Child and Zerk is like, you were calm. You know, it was, I was just there. Yeah. But I was, I did go to a lot of other meetings that they had where other people were voted in. Mm -hmm. But I never got voted in. So you never got voted in either? No, because I I was a double seven. You know, I was in high school. Okay. And so, I had came to a ball. And my first time going to a ball, it was at the edge. And it was on the, not the side and the back, but the front side. Front side, oh yeah. Where mm -hmm. the stage was. Mm -hmm. And I walked. Which Queen Runway, and like I had lashes, and I wanted to wear my heels, and they was like, "No, mm. you gotta if you want to walk female figure, you gotta be in drag." Right. And I was like, "I don't want to get in drag." <laughs> and then Tristan Blake, mm -hmm. who I have been in communication with, with you know, fashion shows and stuff, I told him I needed to get in drag to walk right. a ball, and I walked, and Stephen James was there. We were sitting outside, and Stephen James, oh James, said to me, "Um, so you know what time it is, right?" And everybody around was just like, yeah, so it kind of just happened. It wasn't, um, actually, you know what? I'm lying. That did happen. Mm -hmm. But Ayana came to one of the balls at the edge. And she came up to me and she said, so what's this? What's the discrepancy about you being in my house? <laughs> I was just like, it's no discrepancy. Right. Like, how could you say no to Ayana? Right. Like, it, it just happened, um, to be honest. At I think time, back then it was a lot of just happening. Yeah, yeah, like if you was from DC, right. it's like you. But and back then it was so different too. Like the cons was the cons back then. But this was we, 2007, 2006, like yeah. that era. That was that was so long ago too. So long ago. Do you remember going to Buns on when, thir yes. Was it Thursdays or Wednesdays? Hello, yes. And everybody that's watching this that was yeah. at Buns knows. Man, <laughs> like remembers. it used to be like that. Used to be it like was the thing. Place. And I'll never forget years ago, me and Paul, God rest his soul. Yes. We took the train to so New York City. They used to have balls either on Wednesdays or Thursdays. It could have been Wednesday, Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday. Somebody might remember, mm -hmm. but I can't remember what it was, but I was able to meet Christian Bazaar, God rest his soul. Oh, wow. And like after the ball, we all went out to eat. Mm -hmm. And I remember that clearly in my, I just can't remember which day it was. Okay. That was a actually that was a really great experience. I think that was my first time going to New York City. Okay, and so that was years ago, we talking about um, the Monday Night Madness balls. I think that was the name of it. They used to mm -hmm. happen at the Edge, um, and Dante was on the show recently, um, and he talked about him and James trying to bring back up the um, Rumble mm -hmm. balls. Mm -hmm. So hopefully that happens. Um, I don't think they call Rumble balls. I don't know what they call. But he's well, trying to make recently. Somebody else was trying to also oppose where they were trying to bring up some weekly balls here. And somebody James, else. Yeah, somebody else and James was giving a no. No. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> no. Shout out to James. <laughs> Shout Thank out you. to James. No, ma'am. Yeah. Okay. Uh -uh. Fast forward, mm -hmm. been in the house of calm for how many years? Ooh. Oh, the math. Some, Some years. years. Okay. So Some years. Um, a transition came. Ayana mm -hmm. wanted to start her own house. Mm -hmm. She wanted to start the House of Christian. Mm -hmm. um, she enlisted you as one of her... Of course. <laughs> <laughs> so, that was a joke. Members, nah, that was a joke. One of her members um, to transition over. Mm -hmm. um, what made you decide that you wanted to go and join the House of Christian? Well, I think the reason why, and which is probably the reason why James started, Little James, shout out to Lord James. Yes, like, shout out to Lord James. Lord James, I respect the person that pay attention. Mm -hmm. He paid He paid attention and he did what he had to do. Mm -hmm. And it, it's successful. Mm -hmm. So that means he did his homework. Okay. 
Okay. That's so important. And that's what people don't do. They don't do their homework. It was crazy. I ran into him at the fireplace, and then he was talking for a long time. I think it was like a little kiki ball. Mm -hmm. And, you know, me and him was talking. But shout out to Lord James. You got you have my respect. Um, I th Ayana didn't like the way James, love you, James, was, you know, running the house. So Ayana wanted to start her own, you know, history. You know, okay. Even though she already had her history in the ball scene, she wanted to do her own house or whatever. Um, I went with Ayana because even before then, what people don't know, I was the I was the DC father. Do you remember? I remember. I was the DC father. However, that position was taken away from me because something that happened between James and Twin. Okay. J okay, James, I don't know exactly what happened. I, I can't remember what happened, but Twin ended up coming to me about something that James did. Mm -hmm. When in return, I was like, well, that's not right. You know me. Mm -hmm. I'm just a fair guy. Like, I believe right is right, wrong is wrong, you know? And that's, I'm never going to stop believing that. Oh, or, you know, whatever. But at any rate, I got in the middle of that because Twin came to me. Mm -hmm. Because... You know, what James says, stays. That's what it is, which that's people are people. That's just how James is. But at any rate, I end up getting out that position because of that situation. And we had that ball in, um, in Atlanta. While y'all came, well, Shana oh, came out as mother. Okay. When y'all had the all white on? Yeah, and James was not even there. However, Selwyn was having a problem trying to figure out what is he still calling me out as father. father. Mm -hmm. So James told him not to. Mm -hmm. Mind you, you know, I didn't trip. You know, it's all good. However, you got to remember, the DC cons, a lot of them did not travel. It was a, it was a handful of people that really went to New York City mm -hmm. and went to Atlanta and went different places mm -hmm. to actually represent the DC chapter or walk balls until Selman came, which opened a whole nother door where cons could be more exclusive. Mm -hmm. Because the cons was more like a boutique house. Like they would go to New York, but they wouldn't be like all over. So Selman opened that door for when he started adding members, LA, this way, this way, this way. So Selman done a lot for the house of God. I love you, Selvin. Like you are like one of my favorite people, and I miss you so much. Like I miss you, Selvin. God bless you, and I love you. Um, so, um, I end up getting put out of that position. I guess because of the, it was it was just it was just wrong. So, what did you end up being? Did he call you out that night? Yeah, he did end up but calling me out, but Bruce. Yeah, just as Bruce, or you know, whatever the case may be. But. Um, I was like one of the only ones from DC that was really like going to New York and walking in rooms with a twist, you know, doing, cause a lot of them was not traveling. Mm -hmm. It was a, it was a lot. So that was one of the reasons why when I, and I left, I left, I left right. I think I even still got that email. You gotta keep your receipts. <laughs> I put an email in the group. I guarantee you I could find that email. Mm -hmm. But um, I, I left right and I let them know that I was leaving with Ayana. But um, Ayana, she had something more, it was more structured. She had her plans aligned, which made more sense. So that was why I left. And also, I feel like when you have people like James, you have people like Hurl, you have people like Shannon in these high positions, mm -hmm. at some point in time, you should, all, you should be training somebody else so you can take a back seat. You don't want to, you, you should want to have somebody to sit in your position so you can just sit in the background well, the and train, it, it's like a job. You train to be a manager, you become a CEO. You're supposed to train people to sit in your chair. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that was, and the reason why I'm saying that, I think that that was a problem with the House of Khan. James, even still to this day, he, what he says stands, which is, I respect, which is, but you 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 gotta you gotta want to like sit in the background sometimes and just let the people run other people run the house pretty much. Mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. Or 
Yeah, pretty much. And I think that James just wanted so much power over top of the house. Well, he was ruining it. He was ruining the house. That's what I think. I mean, okay. I respect him, you know, but yeah. So the House of Christian. Mm -hmm. You guys had your debut at the Latex Ball. Mm -hmm. and it all came to an end. Yep, it did. Um, So how was that for you? Like, in your opinion, what was the reason in... I think the reason is because I love you, Ayana. My girl, forever. I love you. I just think Ayana didn't really have the time to really pull into having her own house. That's what I think. Because mm -hmm. you know, she's a doctor. She do other things, you know. So, in the beginning, oh yeah, let's start this. Everything's always good in the beginning. Mm -hmm. But then once, you know, you get into it, things change. So I think that she just didn't have enough time to really put into the house. So it ended up dismantling. Exactly. So why this but let me tell you this. What people don't know, I was the first person that left. So I always wanted. Was that fifth person? First. Okay, first. I left first. Okay. And then Torrance left. Okay. And Charles was still there. I believe Charles was still there. I believe Charles, yeah, Charles still there. But I know I left first and then Torrance left. So when you left, did you leave and go to another house or did you just say, I'm out? I left and went to another house. Did you talk to Ayana about I leaving? Did. I did tell her that I was leaving. I so did. before we talk about you telling her that she was leaving, mm -hmm. you chose to go to another house, right. which is Garcon. Yes. How did that come about? What was that conversation? Um, Alyssa is my mother, if y'all don't know. Shout um, out to... Legendary Alyssa. drag space we love icon. You. I love you, Alyssa. Alyssa um is my mother, so that's how that be, that's how that became. Mm -hmm. Um also I end up building a relationship with Shannon mm -hmm. and I end up building a relationship with Whitney, um, and a few other members in the house and now had you had a relationship with them prior to um Christian and Khan? Yes, I did. Okay. Because mm -hmm. Alyssa was my mother. So I will always like be around them. Okay. And I built a relationship with Fred. Love you, Fred. That's the overall father. Um, and with building a relationship with Shannon, I never felt not wanted. Like, I love Shannon. Shannon always made, made me feel welcome. Mm -hmm. So, to me, that says a lot. So, that was one reason why I went to the House of Garçon. And I love the House of Garçon. Like, even still to this day, Shannon makes me feel welcome. Or anybody that comes to Shannon House, like, mm -hmm. you feel welcome. Like, I love, I love that house. I would never leave that house, but yeah. Okay. Sabah, shout out to mm -hmm. Shannon Garçon. Yeah. Listen, I told, we had an interview with, with Dre uh -huh. the other day, the one day I lost. Uh -huh. And I was telling Dre that when I interviewed the icon, me and him lived on the same block. And okay. Shannon walked down for the interview. <laughs> and we got so wasted. And we had so much fun. We had so much footage that I could not even post all the footage from the interview. But shout out to Shannon. He just had a birthday not too, too long ago. And I hit him up. It's time for part two. Yeah. Love you, Shannon. Yes, love you too. And... Whitney. We had a conversation about love Whitney. Whitney. I love you, Whitney. 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 Are we going to get to that favorite? Okay. <laughs> okay. We're we going we we to gonna get, get to that. that. We gonna get but to we were talking about how yeah. Dante was talking about Whitney and how Whitney has like mm -hmm. this mysterious vibe to him. And, like, I love knows. everything about Whitney. Yeah. He never steps out of character. I love Whitney is the person to be like. Like, it's nothing. Everything is positive about Whitney. And you ver, you ver, you, you don't never find that with people. And I like, I like, I love Whitney. Okay. So you talked about your admiration for mm -hmm. Alyssa, your relationship with Whitney and Shannon. How did it come about? Hey, I'm interested in coming to the house or did they invite you? Like, how did that go? Um, I think it was like, everything just like fell in place. And I let them know that I wanted to be over here and they was welcoming. Like, okay. So I, I think it was kind of like something that was meant to be. Like, but I did let them know that I want to be there and they welcomed me there. Okay. So then and I was with them all the time though. Even to a point like when I was in Atlanta and I was still a con or Christian, like I one time I was at the con table when Fred was asking me why was I over there. Because Fred thought that I was a garçon. Oh, uh, okay. Oh, that was your, yeah. Yeah. Like 
Because I was with them all the time. Like, mm -hmm. I was... So were you, were, you, always, were you thinking about it then? Like... I wasn't. You wasn't. I wasn't thinking them. about it then. But I love the fact that I built a relationship with them with even not being in their house. Mm -hmm. But um, I remember Zerk always telling me, like, you one of my, ch you, you one of my children that's different. He say that all the time. He's like, you are so different from the rest of my kids. He used to say that about Will, too. Like, rest in peace. Rest in Will. peace, Will. Rest in peace, Will. But, yeah. Um, so, and Zerk used to be like, oh, you in that pretty house. <laughs> That's so uh, that doesn't sound like some yeah, shit. You in that pretty back. house. But, um, yeah. So, yeah. you then had to have Let a Let me house. ask you a question. Even though this interview is about me, okay. why, why did you stop doing ballroom? Because you just, like, got over it. Do that go back to where sometimes everything ain't for everybody? Um, okay, I so like I found my voice mm -hmm. with doing the interviews. Mm -hmm. I didn't really want to walk no more. Right. I was too occupied with my next interview, you're right. only as good as your last interview. Yeah, like, what's what's you know what's popping? So, um, and then once the the Christian thing came about, mm -hmm. it was a lot of controversy because Ayana was calling me. We were in communication. I used to sit on the phone with Ayana about the name of the house because mm -hmm. there was she. You was were trying supposed to, to come to a meeting and you never came. Yeah, I'm, and you, I'm gonna tell you, somebody didn't want you there. That's all I'm gonna say. So Kanaka didn't want me there. Oh, so how did you get it? How did you get it? Because I, I, I wasn't even gonna say it on the interview because I, but how did, how did, who told you? Okay, so this is the thing. You gotta remember, me and BOS were really close. Yup. Um, Daryl, who was not in the house, I was close to you at the time. Yeah, that was. I was still, mm -hmm. I was still close to Monty at the time. The thing about it was when Takaya walked the Grand March at Latex Ball, she fell. And she fell, at she fell again at DC. At, at DC yeah, yeah. And when Kelly had her radio show, mm -hmm. they I was on the radio show and they asked me about the ball. I was doing a recap and mm -hmm. her falling came up. Right. She alleged that I was trashing her mm -hmm. on the radio show. Oh, okay. okay which okay. was not true. Right. And you and I spoke about this because you were the person who I was in communication with also about coming oh, to yeah, the house. Oh, yeah, about coming to the house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And mm -hmm. I said, well, if y'all want to go back and listen, because Ayana was like, well, I want y'all to sit and talk about this. And I was like, I don't want to talk about this. Yeah, I think you this. got over it. Yeah, I yeah. was like, mm -hmm. what, what, why am I defending right. my character? This girl has not walked, she's not won a ball a day in her fucking life. Why are y'all talking right. to me about her being upset about something that I said that was facts? All I said was she But fell. I think you got over it, so you just didn't come. I got over it. Yeah, you got I, over it. The reason I got over it was because... I was told that when my name came up in the house meeting mm -hmm. about this topic in particular, mm -hmm. that my friends who I was close to did mm -hmm. not speak in my defense. And you were a part of that. I didn't speak in your defense? This is what I was told. That's surprising because I'm a very opinionated person. I mean, like, he used to call me and be like, right, like Yo, the house I meeting. And I couldn't make the house meeting because I was doing a homeless mm -hmm. benefit. I didn't speak And you either. knew about this. Everybody knew. Uh-huh. And... This is why I felt like it was a rift in our relationship. For those of you that don't know, Bruce was my father. And we did have a... We were really close. Yeah. And yes. this situation ruined that because I felt betrayed. Mm -hmm. Like, this person is supposed to speak in my absence. And I don't even recall it, honestly, because I'm a very... I speak up, like, to a point where now it's like... When I say something, it's like a problem. Yes, it's a problem. Like, and this is I I'm like, getting blocked on Facebook and stuff. Like, not I mean, that I care. I, I definitely but, blocked you. See, I did. See, but in retrospect, I was not there physically at the meeting. The right. only thing I could go off was basically what was somebody was telling me. And I can say now, mm -hmm. at this point, I apologize. And I apologize because if you felt like I said. I don't remember. Like, I didn't want to hear nothing. I speak then. up. You had to say when right. I asked you about it. Oh, I think so. I, you, we, you automatically got defensive and was like, oh. what do you mean? You just listening to people. And it was just like a... Right. I know for a fact mm -hmm. that there are people that were there mm -hmm. in that house that did not like the relationship that we had. Right. And that were waiting for an opportunity to, to, to cause a rift. Right. And I fell into the trap. 
And we was much younger than we were. Yeah, and like our said, minds not where I, they are now. And I could see you calling me going off, and I went back off or something. Yeah, like, we just it just it just it was a bad situation. So literally, yeah. that's why. We, we haven't And we must have broke that because we must have ran into each other at Scope or something, right? Yeah, no, we, 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 we ran into each other at Hippo. Yeah. And we talked about it, but there was no resolve. Right. I was just like, you tried it. I expected that she was going to, you know, defend me. Mm-hmm. Because again, this So girl, pretty much it was a miscommunication. It was a miscommunication. Yeah. But so as far as how, like how, how are I you need to walk, I was there right. in a different capacity. I was mm-hmm. at balls, doing red carpets, corresponding. You were. I was off my Oprah shit. Yes. <laughs> it is what it is. Back to yeah. you, Bruce. Right. Stop trying to know the fuck. <laughs> Cause I got you know. But again, I do apologize, and I feel like it was so much time and I wasted. It was a excessive. lot of time wasted. But because our relationship was one that I did value. Me too. And I felt like I knew what it was. Like I knew what I know now. I didn't know then. I you know the sheep was over there. Right. We was both for yeah. Just. Living life, not caring, you know, you know how you do like whatever, you know, like it. But the older you get, you be like, you know what? And I would yeah. see you and be yeah. like, both of us. It was I a few think. years, and I was like, I don't you, I still don't <laughs> you. <laughs> and I'm always I'm like, like, child, okay, you somebody, know yeah, somebody would like bring it. up your name, and I'd be like, child, and that, like, I because I was over it. And mind you, uh, the only thing that I could say about mm-hmm. you was that. Right, but I couldn't say anything else because that's not the relationship. <laughs> and I love you, I and love you too. we are at a better place. We're over it, is, yeah, we're all over it. But I did want to know why you was, you know, you just got over ballroom. You know? There you have it. I love ballroom. I listen. We're gonna talk about pose later. Um, we're gonna talk about the state of ballroom. We're gonna talk about how you feel about it. We're gonna talk about that last episode. Oh man. Woo! Okay, so Man, back like, to okay. you had to have a conversation. With, shout out to Ayana. Ayana, I love you. We love you, Ayana. You mean everything to me. You know the conversations that we I used to call Ayana and be like, yo, I'm with this um piece of tray and I see something and I don't know what's going on. What is this? And she <laughs> she like she be like, Oh, that's never don't worry. And she's like, run. run. Yeah, yeah, we love you, Ayana. Love you. you need to um, love you, Ayana. Again. Again. Yeah. Okay. Ayana, you hear that? You need to be interviewed, Ayana. People want to know, like, what you doing in L.A. and all that. Good. <sighs> Ayana, when you touch down, like, I want to do a whole production. I'm going to call Daryl. We're going we gonna, to we gonna set it up. It's going to be lit. Like, yeah. let's do it. Let's do it, and let's do it right the way we did it before. I feel like we real, set a standard. Real fancy. Real fancy. Um, you had to have a conversation with Ayana mm-hmm. about going to Garcon. Mm-hmm. How'd that go down? Um... I only I think I sent her a text, which was no. I'm not. I can't remember if we we eventually did talk. Mm-hmm. But when I think when I told her I was leaving, I even I sent her a text. Mm-hmm. She responded. Uh yeah, I think she did respond. I can't remember, but I know we eventually did talk though. Which is not the way you do things. Did you ever consider Ayana's feelings? You see how I could correct myself. No, you, you, like people no. don't. People have a problem with correcting themselves, but that's not how you do things. So I was wrong for that. Okay. But, you know, where my mind is at now, it wasn't there then. Mm-hmm. But that's not how you leave a house. But What's the proper way to leave? The proper way to leave is to have a conversation with the mother or whoever invited you to the house. You know, mm-hmm. whoever was your sponsor for the house. Or, you know, the boy. The boy. Let's talk mm-hmm. about sponsorship. Yeah. Uh-huh. Because a lot of people, I don't know if the new generation is aware of what sponsorship is or how that works. I remember it was a time when we would have a house meeting and they'd be like, if you want to sponsor or if you're sponsoring somebody, this is the time to bring them. And you basically, that person was a representation of you. It's almost like getting somebody a job and then you're referring. The way Garçon work, in order for you to be, to come to a house meeting and get and um, get invited in, you have to have a sponsor. Okay. And you have to know what Garçon is about and you get asked questions. Okay. So. And we got some shady people in this house. <laughs> this town of well, yeah. let's let's um let's get into a little bit of that later. Okay. Um, because I want to talk about more of the house aspect and the way things were. And would you remember them to be and what they are now? Like, what's the difference? And, um, um, Ayana, conversation. Okay. She responded. Um, she maybe. did. Re- she did respond. Okay. And she did respond. She was like, okay, and probably something else. And but we did eventually did talk. We okay. did eventually talk. But. 
Yeah, and that was that. It never, she never, it never changed our relationship. Mm -hmm. I think at that point, she was pretty much over. Oh, real? Yeah. Okay. And see, this is why yeah. I would love to interview her on. I want to know where her headspace was. If you, you started the house and people start to peel off and go on and do other things, I can imagine what her state of mind mm -hmm. might have been. But we won't know unless we have an exclusive yeah. from the icon herself. The icon. Okay, so thus far, how has your experience been in the House of Best Song? Um, it's been great. Like, it's the greatest part about being in the House of God Song is the family part. Like, the re forget the ballroom part. Like, I have a relationship with Shannon. I have a relationship with Whitney and all of them. And I love that. Like, some people that's in houses don't have that up close and personal relationship. Mm -hmm. So I think the great part about being in the House of God Song um, is the how we come together as a family. And this goes back to the origin of what ballroom was built on. Yep. And when we start talking about pose, you kind of, for those that aren't a part of ballroom, you kind of get a feel for what it was and what the reason was for it. Do you feel like Garcon is more... I think now that times have changed now a lot. Mm -hmm. So, the, the taper back to pose, the way pose is now, you know, pretty much everybody don't really live with their gay parents like that no more. Mm -hmm. So a lot has changed. You know, most people get apartments with their sisters or something like that. It's just now it's a whole new generation, so things have changed. But what Garcon, I mean, we just come together as a family and do a lot of family things. And that's what makes me love the house even more. Well, Bruce, listen, how you feel about dating in ballroom? Um, Cause you dated in ballroom. I I have dated in ballroom and it didn't turn out well. However, it was a good experience and a lesson that I applied. You gotta apply stuff. People don't do that. Um, for me, dating in ballroom wouldn't work for me. Why not? Um, because I don't believe I don't believe people know how to balance out ballroom in real life. Mm -hmm. To me, ballroom is. And like extra love, extra curriculum, you know, you it's it's like an outlet where you go and you let loose and you have fun and you enjoy, you know, you just open yourself wide up and you know, but back to reality, you know, an everyday living person, you know, jobs, school, mm -hmm. things of that nature. However, you got people that come in ballroom and they all their focus be on is ballroom. Okay. Like it's it's not about trying to build a better future for yourself. You, They get so, their mental get so caught up in ballroom where they lose their self. Not all people, not all people, but I've, I've seen that with my own eyes. I've seen people get wrapped up in ballroom and they lose their self. Like I, well, I'm not, no, no, I'm not going to do that. But um, I've seen it with my own eyes. Okay. Like I legit seen somebody that still do, do not have a job, but managed to be at every ball. Like, I mean, but yeah, I wouldn't date him. I wouldn't date him. Well, if I was to date in ballroom, it would have to be somebody that has common sense, somebody that understands the difference between ballroom and real life. So you're open to it. Yeah, I mean, I'm open to it. But see, the thing about it is, I'm a very deep person. Like, cause I've been around long enough to know enough. Mm -hmm. So the way I think is a little different from the way other people think, which is supposed to be. And what I've learned as I get older is that everybody is not going to accept me and everybody is not supposed to. However, it took me a long time to learn that, you know, everybody is not going to accept Bruce. So with that being said, with me learning that, I know that like, for me, like I'm not, I'm just not for every, I'm just not for everybody. For a prime example, like I follow my conscience, like if, before I get in tune with anybody, I weigh out all the pros and cons. Mm -hmm. And I weigh out what's gonna work better for me. Do I take this risk and try to build something with this person? Or is it easy for me to just walk away? And most of the time it's easier for me to walk away because I don't feel like that I have the time nor the patience to really try to build somebody the way I feel like they should be built. Have you ever made that decision and then regret? No. Regret it? No. Okay. No. I don't feel like 
I, you know what? You know how people be like, oh yeah, um, I feel like I, I lost that one. Mm -hmm. You know, no, I don't. I don't. Not at all. Would you go back to any of your exes? Uh, would I go back to any of my exes? No. Okay. I wouldn't. I mean, I try to keep. Well, when we when we broke up, I tried to. Well, when we broke up for me, I try to make peace with anybody you know I've been with or dealt with because that's important for me. Mm -hmm. um, and most of them, I have peace with except for one. But you know, but that's his fight, not mine, because I'm good with him. But he has his own personal issues that he has to deal with, you know, for whatever reasons. But everybody else except for one, you know, we pretty. Cool. I feel like I can call him and be like, you know, how everything good, you know, how you doing or something like that, or how everything's been. And one of them even got my name tattooed on him. Oh. It's still got it, I, I believe so, but I don't know. He might got it covered up now. You know, you meet new people, they be like, oh, <laughs> hell no. Nah. That shit got to go. go. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. Okay. Um. So, what's Bruce, Bruce's type? Um... Believe it or not, I remember a category being your type. Do you really want to go there? I so don't have to. I'm just saying. No, I, no this is what, we can I go there. What I remember, like I had to like pull out receipts for people because of stuff like that. Like <laughs> it may have changed. No, no. What I'm saying is like I had to pull out receipts for somebody saying that this was my type. You or only I would, date this. I only type date of this type of person. Or I had to pull out receipts where where I could show them that people that walk face has pulled up on me. I didn't pull up on them. You, they pulled up on but me. But why do you think they pulled up on you? Probably because of what they <laughs> heard exactly. or whatever. Or whatever. Exactly. Well, let me just say this. I love beautiful people. Okay. But now that I'm older and I'm a little bit wiser, um, I love beautiful people that's beautiful on the inside and the outside, not just the exterior. Mm -hmm. But I didn't know that then. But now I know that now. So... When I say I have a type now, I probably would say I do. You just I do. I do have a type. I do have a type. You have to your exterior have to be suitable for me. Like yeah. So I have a type. And the internal needs to match. And the internal needs to match. Yeah. Okay. So speaking of categories, mm -hmm. I had Dante on the show. Shout out to legendary East Coast father. Shout out Dante. Dante Balenciaga. Dante. My love. Speaking of Dante, I feel like I owe Dante a battle. I'll tell you why. <laughs> I'll tell Let's you why. Let's talk about that first. <laughs> I'll tell you why. Because Alvernia had an all-white ball. I beat Dante there. Mm -hmm. However, the latex ball came up, which is much more monumental to me. Mm -hmm. And I'll never forget... Monty told me to wear this jacket. Monty had got, you had to bring it like a pimp. I would not wear it. Me, you know, me being me. And Monty's like, you really should wear this trench coat. You, I mean, it was like a fur coat. Mm -hmm. I didn't wear it. I was in the House of Con then. Shout out to the House of Con. Um, and Dante came and sent everybody. And he was supposed to win. Like, he turned it out. Okay. He turned it out. So you need your lick back on Dante. Yeah, because I feel like, even though we won and won, Dante actually is the overall winner because... That is like a more that the latex bowl back then mm -hmm. is was more of a mon monumental bowl, you know. Like, do you feel like we have a monumental bowl right now? Um, the one that is the one to definitely walk. Not so much. Not so much. I don't think. Would so you enough. say the awards bowl in each city, whenever they have it, is a monumental bowl? It could be to some people. Okay. It could be to some people, but not. It's it's changed. A lot it, has changed, like, because people have so many balls now. Yeah. It's too many balls, like. Dante spoke about that, too. It, it's a lot, a lot has changed. So Dante gave me, I asked him, I was like, if you had to put a team together, a pretty boy wilderness, mm -hmm. and you had to pick a team of five. Five people. Who would be five. on his list. Uh -huh. and you wanted the people on his list. Oh, I was. Shout out to Dante. So give me Shout that. Shout out to Dante. Bruce didn't, um, watch, Bruce didn't watch all your interviews. <laughs> no, I did watch it because I do remember. I do. I do remember him saying that. Okay, so I do remember him saying that. You got to give me a say, Um, pretty let's boy see, realness. pretty boy realness. Um, my first person will be Walik. Do you remember Walik? No, he's from LA. Brandon, 
He like stopped walking. I need to see a picture of him. I'll show you a picture of him. Bruce um, been showing me pictures yeah, all day. Cause people, I, um, the right people know who Walik is, Brandon. Brandon Anthony. Shade. He's a promoter in Atlanta. Yeah, because uh -huh. people don't know that. A lot of people don't know a lot of stuff. They don't. And they, you know, well. Um, Damo. Damo. Uh, who else? Dante. Two more. For some reason, like, to be honest with you, Ballroom has changed so much, like, this, Ballroom has changed so much. Pretty boy realness. Um, Joel. Okay. You remember Joel? I remember Joel. 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 Shout out to Joel. You still got it. You can Hi, still Joel. walk. I um, Joel, one more. One more. Joel was light skin. He used to have that beard and goatee. One more. Hmm. Man. See, and it shouldn't even be this hard. One more. I'll say it's a um Rome. Rome. Um he's a Mugler. Okay. You know what I'm talking about? No. Yeah. So that's my five. Okay. Alright, so what's your favorite category groups to watch? Um <laughs> <laughs> I think I already know. Butch Queen Face. Butch Queen Face. Yeah. I thought you were gonna say Femme Queen Face. No, Butch okay. Queen Face. Butch Queen Face. All right. Butch Queen Who's face. your favorite Butch Queen Face of all time? Of all favorite Butch Queen Face of all time. Um, is that fair, or should I give you like a top? I think you should give me a <laughs> top, top five. Yeah, a top top five, five Butch Queen Face of all time. Um, you, you gotta have a favorite though. I'm pretty sure it's somebody from your house, which is nothing wrong with Josh. Okay. Oh my God. I love Josh. I haven't seen Josh. Shout out to Josh. So I saw him the last time I was in Atlanta. Love you, Josh. Oh my God. Um, Emery. Hello. Shout out to Emery. Emery Garcon. Shout out to Emery. Jason. Prodigy. For, for various reasons. Shout out to Jason. Yes, Jason. Um, Whitney, of course. Hello. Whitney. One more. Tony Milan. God rest, God rest his soul. Tony Milan. So that's the five. Okay. Most memorable Butch Queen face battle. Or just one that you love. It don't got to be the most memorable. But. Um, I think the one that I remember the most is when Emery won that $5,000. Yes. I was like, he is gorgeous. Yes. <laughs> I was like, he is gorgeous. <laughs> Yeah. Shout out to Emery. We need we need we need the exclusive yeah. Emery. Um so what battle would you like to see that you have not seen yet? Um and who you think will win? I wanna see you mean the now or just period? Period. I would love to see Whitney and Brian Infinity battle again. Oh. Oh that would be so dope. Like, yeah. So that's Whitney and Brian Infinity. Okay. So, are you excited for the Mugler Ball? I am excited for the Mugler Ball. Shout out to the House of Mugler because I know y'all going to turn it up. It's going to oh be dope. God. Shout out to Yusuf. I love Yusuf. Yes. Shout out to Yusuf. Yusuf, you know I love you. Happy belated birthday to Yusuf. Okay. All right. So, are you walking the ball? You going to Atlanta? Maybe no. Yes. Um, no. I am going to Atlanta, but I'm not walking the ball in Atlanta. Okay. But y'all see. Yeah. Maybe, maybe. Not. I'm not walking the ball in Atlanta, but yeah. Okay. Um. So, um, pose. Pose. Oh my God. Pose. That last episode. Just the show, pretty. Like I, I love that show for various reasons. I love Blanca. I love Blanca because she put everybody else first except for herself, and it's hard to find people like that. I love Blanca. Like, that's my girl. Okay. I love Blanca. And it's very rare nowadays that there are mothers like her nowadays. Okay. That going to always keep their children on the right track and not going to always agree with them and not going to accept some of the things that they do. It's a no-go. Um, that's why I love Blanca. Okay. That last episode... It touched on so many different things. And one of the things we didn't talk about earlier, because we had a conversation before we started filming, of course. 
Um, Electra was talking about Pretel having the little one, the child, and the she child. was like, "It's the number one rule in ballroom: parents do not have their house kids." Let me just say this: um, what people have to understand is both of them was at a like a vulnerable stage, mm -hmm. so both of them was dealing with things mentally. Mm -hmm. um, also, if you pay attention to the show, there was not pray tell. He he didn't have him there to do that. Yeah. He persistently told this young man to sleep on the couch. He did. Unfortunately, this hot young man, I mean, because he's hot. Yeah. And a lot of people that's on Facebook going off saying all this other stuff, they probably would have done the same. Exactly. <laughs> like people just people not real with people not real. But um But Ricky was was And what people wrestling. have to understand is Ricky is a street hustler. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Ricky So do you think so this he, is a hustle? he do he he's trying to find he's trying to find love somewhere that he anywhere that he can get it. Mm -hmm. So however I do think P Pray Tell could have rejected that. However his mental, it was not at that stage to reject that. And he explained it. He was like, yeah. you know, I'm... And I love that Pray Tell was like, I never meant to hurt anybody. Yeah. So the fact that he said that, you know, says says a lot. But, like, people are human. We are human beings. Like, we do things. And we question it later. Even if it's years later, like, why did I do this? Or why did I do, this? Why did I do that? But, you know, like... It's no judgment. Like, I think he probably could have been like, you know what, we can't do this. Mm -hmm. But he didn't because unfortunately his mental is not altogether either because he's still trying to deal with something that was so big in the 90s and the 80s. So he's still trying to, you know, sort his own health and his own mental out as well. Also trying to help the young man. Okay. What do you think? Um... I agree. I think that he, um, they both are definitely in a vulnerable state. And Pretel was looking for love as well. Mm -hmm. So it kind of was just like. Did you see how happy he was the next day? Th yeah. He went to meet Jack. Bitch, he was doing shows. <laughs> and, and when they was like, it's Ricky, they was like, oh. Yeah. And it was just like, that. it, it was so yeah, many parts of that so episode many, yeah. that was. And then when Jack was like, well, I'd rather be a um, babysitter than a nurse or something like that. <laughs> that was so funny. But um, people going to have their, they have their opinions on stuff. Yeah. But you know what's crazy is this new, this generation now, like, they want to date older people. They do. Like, no, like, seriously, like, I be like, so the young ass they yes, on smart. and they oh well you don't look your age. Just that's not the point. Like it's still because when when you get older you you you, you know you get wiser so you kind of like your mind you don't think the way you used to think. So you you try you try to weigh everything out, mm -hmm. you know. But this newer generation, I'm telling you like they not accepting people that of their age, the same <laughs> age, same age as them. Like they come at you hard. Like really. So you think people looking for love or they looking for help? Um it depends on what they going through personally. That's the that's what people don't understand. Yeah, that's really what it's about. It depends on what people are going through personally and what they're in search for. That's what it is. Like that's just what it is. And people um it's a it's a lot of shit going on. <laughs> like really like which is kinda fucked up, but you know, it's just a lot of shit go on in the scene. Like, okay, let me ask you a question that I did not ask any of my other guests, but I sure. wanted to. And I want to make sure that I ask people this question because it's something that is a lot of people's reality. Mm -hmm. How do you feel about someone being HIV positive mm -hmm. and being involved with someone sexually or in a relationship? I'm glad. They haven't protected sex, mm -hmm. but do you think that they should um, reveal their status to them? I'm glad you asked that question. I think it depends on the person. I feel like if you're a decent human being, and if it's somebody that you feel like you're about to build something with, mm -hmm. then you should tell them. Or if you feel like it's somebody that you feel like gonna be around for a while, or if y'all end up building a connection, mm -hmm. 
I feel like you should tell them. However, if you're having a one night stand and you're protecting yourself, you're not obligated to tell you know nobody else that. That's your personal information. What okay. do you think? I agree. I agree 100%. Yeah. I don't think that everything is for everybody to know. It's like, right. that's how many, if you're a person that have a lot of fucking cash. Now, I think it's selfish is. if, say like if me and you got into a relationship mm -hmm. and you didn't know that I was positive, I never told you until further on down the line. Mm -hmm. But however, if you was doing your homework and you go through people's shit, then you will know. People have you be, done that before? What? Like, what do you mean? Like, I let me tell you something. Inspect the gas. I, I work for the FBI. <laughs> I work for the FBI. I wanna yeah, it's like who don't pay attention? You you gotta pay attention. I pay attention to everything. Mm -hmm. Like, I pay attention to everything. But yeah, I don't think that somebody have to let somebody that they having a one night stand with know. However, um now it, it becomes a different story if you're going around having unprotected sex with somebody and it's a one night stand and you're positive and just raw fucking raw yeah up. like I feel like but that's yeah that's totally different yeah I feel like that's you shouldn't do that if you were involved with somebody mm -hmm. casually mm -hmm. start liking them and they tell you that they're positive what would be your I'm glad you asked that too response. okay what people need to do now is, and I'm glad that you, people don't like to talk about stuff like it's this. It's an uncomfortable like, topic right. for people, most people. It, it is, but they can talk about everything, everything else. else. They, they can advocate for everything else except for their own personal struggles. Mm -hmm. Because if, if, if it bothers somebody to talk about it, then it's a struggle that they have with it. Mm -hmm. And that goes back to all these people on Facebook doing all this stuff and when it comes to certain things they get offended blase blase but that's a whole nother topic too but the same way you advocate and you go crazy about other stuff go do that with your own issues mm -hmm. tackle your own issues which you what people don't do um but people need to get educated on so much with hiv so much with prep people need to get educated on so people are so uneducated Nowadays, they have a way where two people could be together forever, mm -hmm. could have a healthy relationship if one is negative, if one is, if, and if one is positive. One of the but if you don't educate yourself on HIV and AIDS, you don't know this. Yeah. So, for me personally, you ask me, would I be with somebody that's positive? Mm -hmm. If I love somebody and everything is going the way it should go, and it's, I feel like we're not really battling with nothing heavy besides them telling me that they're positive and I love them. Yeah, I would. Okay. What you were saying is true. One of the writers opposed after the episode was talking about mm -hmm. how she lives with HIV mm -hmm. and how she's undetectable mm -hmm. and she cannot, she can't, um, if she had a significant other, they would not be able to contract the virus from her, mm -hmm. you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. because she's undetectable. Mm -hmm. um, but yes, a lot of people are not educated, so the first, the answer is no, absolutely yeah, not. Absolutely not. Yeah. When they, the ones that are saying no probably haven't been texted, tested in years, so they don't even know their own status. People, I can't, I'm going to tell you, like, pe my mother always told me people are people. People are people. But... Uh, that is a sensitive topic for some people. It's not one for me, but it's a sensitive topic for some people. But people need to educate themselves on things. Okay, and while we're on that mm -hmm. topic, Bruce didn't want to do this show. He didn't want to do the interview because he felt like when people are voicing their opinions over a little bit, a lot of times they have to give a disclaimer before they respond to certain questions. And they're trying to be politically correct, which is okay. Mm -hmm. But it comes to a point where you're being so politically correct that your opinion about things is out the window. Right. Now you can't even voice your opinion. Right. Honestly. Like, so speak a or, bit about like recently, um, was it the episode before last or not this episode? That it was the one before. Before last, Monty made this long post, which made sense. But he added in the post, I'm not shaming. Like, I feel like 
every time you speak on certain topics, you don't have to add that. Because your post in itself is going to explain that you're not shaming. But do you understand why he did it though? I understand why he did it, but why do we always got to defend certain stuff like that? Mm -hmm. That's a problem for me. Like, if I'm making a post and I'm making it make sense, even though it may not make sense to some other people, but somebody wise and I'm making it make sense, why do I have to say, oh, I'm not shaming this or I'm not shaming that? Like, I just have a problem with when people address certain topics, they get offended for their own personal reasons mm -hmm. of how they take it. But that's a problem for me. But so that's another reason why I didn't want to do this interview. And there's still a lot of stuff that I want to say that I'm not going to say. Mm -hmm. But that's a problem for me. People need to address their own personal issues when they're addressing other issues and other topics on social media. And there you have it. Yeah. So, is Bruce single? Bruce is very single. Is Bruce open to dating? Bruce is very open to dating somebody that understands what dating is. Okay. Um, what should I do? Date. Like a first date. Or like, what would you just enjoy doing for a out with someone who you're trying to get to know? Or somebody that you already oh, know, right. but you're trying to get to know in a different capacity. What do um, something different for me would be taking me somewhere, let's say like it's a park in Virginia mm -hmm. or it's a trail that you can walk or something like that. Um, that's an ideal day for me because if we're walking in a park or we're, walk we're walking, you know, on a trail and it gives us time to talk to get in and get into each other's heads mm -hmm. pretty much. Um, so for me, that's, I'm more attracted to things like that. Like we can go out to eat or whatever, but to me going out to eat is like going out on an interview. <laughs> that can't be a first date. Like that, that wouldn't be my first date. Why? What's, what is it about the dinner that's an interview? It's like, it's just, it could be, it could become awkward. Is it the scenery for you? Yeah. Like I'd rather go, like I said, I'd rather go walk in the park. I'd rather go bowling. I'd rather do something, you know, active. But a first date going out to eat wouldn't work for me. Okay. So what are some of Bruce's turn offs? Now here, this is the thing. Mm -hmm. Some people who just, if this is naturally them, this is not going to work. Right. But what are some of the things that you don't like? Or that you have not liked and people that you dated before? Like I don't like people that don't have common sense. <laughs> <laughs> that cancels out a whole lot of people. <laughs> <laughs> I don't understand people like... I don't understand people. Like, I really don't. I'm like, I, I don't like people that don't have common sense. Like, I don't like, if you, I don't like people that walk into situations that they know is not good for them. And they still walk into them situations. Mm -hmm. And of course, what happens at the end? Same result. Yeah, same result. Like, with me, where I'm at now, like, I'm not walking in no situation that I feel like it's going to take away my peace. Mm -hmm. Or if it's a disruptive situation, like, where I'm at now. Before, I probably would, like, but now, like, no. Like, I'm out. I just can't do it. Like, I appreciate my peace. Okay. Like, really love peace. And I try not to cause drama and all that other stuff even though stuff comes my way but I still I happen. still but even still like I'm the type of person if I know you I'm gonna tap you on your shoulder when I see you and be like let's talk about this if you have a problem with me mm -hmm. definitely if I, if I know you enough to even get on the phone and call you or you know talk to you about it I'm a I'm that type or if I see you out or I feel like you avoiding me I'm gonna pull you to the side and be like you know let's talk man to man you know, woman to man or something like that. That's the type of person I am. Okay. But common sense, like people, I don't, I don't really get people. I really don't like. So I dating know is not easy. Okay. And it should, but that, but it shouldn't be that way. That's the thing about it. It shouldn't be hard. Like dating should be the easy part. No, I'm saying, I'm saying dating is not easy, but it shouldn't be hard. I feel like dating is hard because people don't know how to date. Okay. People don't even know how to be in relationships. Listen, so if people have been linking up just to fuck all these years, they're not going to know how to just date. Right. So I guess you just got to 
start going to the grocery store. Yeah. And meeting and meeting people as yeah. as opposed to the club and the ball and uh, yeah. you know and social media and things of that nature. Yeah. Listen, those DMs are dangerous. Oh my goodness. How's see. your DM looking these days? You really wanna see my DM? You wanna see it after the